Good morning guys, it's Rochelle from One of Lane Furniture again in a very wet and miserable Sydney. No blue skies today. So today I finally got it out of the van and we're working on this beast. I haven't looked at her yet, I don't really know much about her. So let's dive in. She's got a lot of red in her. I won't be doing a light colour. This sucker will bleed. Right. The finish. I don't really care about this whatsoever. This will just come straight off with the sand. Some heat or something has probably gone on it. I don't know. Anyway, I don't really care. It's got the lip, so you know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to be lazy and just do that top and paint that. Probably. Let's see. Oh, we got runners that's good looks like it's in really good condition i like the edges i like it when you've got the panel in on the sides there i really like these hinges i just like the look of them they are nice um let's have a look they're shutting okay the the doors sit outside of the frame so i don't need to worry about any um paint build up affecting the doors opening and shutting so that's awesome in fact, oh no, I will take them off. You could leave them on. If you were going to paint over the hinges, you could leave it on, but I'm not going to. There's not any magnets on there, but it seems to be closing, opening and closing quite well. It's really nice. I won't be painting the inside. It's all in good condition. So I just need to take the draw pulls off, take the doors off. Let's have a look what we've got here. Okay, we've got a veneer. This looks like crappy chipboard, I would say. So I'll be very careful with that. You can see there, if I was to go through that, that's going to start fraying. So I'll be able to sand it, but I'll be very careful. So I definitely don't want to be messing around with this side. Right, let's get stuck in. She's really tall, actually. I don't know if you can tell, but the bottom, um, the bottom doors are taller than your normal buffet. So it's going to be quite hard. Oh, it's not hard, but it's just a little bit higher than I'm used to working. But I need it on the wheels because, um, well, because just because. Right, I'm obviously going to start rambling again today, so be ready for that. Let's get stuck in. Right, I'm really a bit clueless as to what I'm going to do with this one, to be honest. But first of all, I'm going to sand it, see what we've got underneath and go from there. Here comes the rain. Okay, so I'm going in with 120 grit sandpaper. These are the discs. Um, sorry, it's dark. Just see. These are the discs that I get off eBay. A pack of 250 for something like 40 bucks or something like that. Ridiculous. They don't last as long as obviously the um, ones you get from Bunnings, but they probably work at about a dollar a piece from Bunnings, so... You yeah, know, nah. that ain't for me. It cost me a fortune. Right, let's get stuck in and see what we got. patience obviously isn't brilliant but I can see from that that this sucker is going to be hard to get off um, I was already considering painting the top so I actually might do that and that'd be good to show you how I get the the best top um, when it's painted because I very rarely do that so I might do that with this one I'll persevere I'll have another little go but if it takes too long I'll be tapping out 
Okay, wish me luck. That's it, I'm tapping. So, out. Now for others of you watching this, that might be the normal process for it to take that long. It's not with this one, you know, you've seen it many times. It's a, fan, it's a good sounder. So for me, for it to take that long, for me to do that small little piece there, and then for it to not be touching this, I can't be bothered with that. So my aim is just gonna to be to smooth it out as much as possible. I'll continue with the 120 grit, but my aim isn't going to be to get it all off. <clears throat> I'm just gonna be smoothing it out. The other reason as well, I'll show you. You see here where it's had the top on, the wood is stained. There's a different tone to the wood and I can't, I won't be able to sand that out because it's veneer. So I can't go further and further and hope that that would go because it just wouldn't. So that would still show with the stain. So I don't want that. So we're gonna be painting this sucker. Right. Hmm. I suppose I should decide on a colour. I don't know. Right, I'll carry on and see how I go with this. I won't, I won't leave you watching me sand this. I'll show you when it's done. The state that I've got it to, the condition that I've got it to, and then we'll go from there. So I've sanded it all pretty much smooth now. So I haven't done the smooth sand, but I'll do that at the end, as you know. Um, but here's another tip that it's veneer. It's all damaged, so what I'm going to do is fill that now with Dixie Belle mud, and it'll just fill in that those cracks. So this this piece was not able to be. I couldn't have gone raw with this if I wanted to. So I'm actually quite happy to see that. So I don't have to question my decision. Um, so I'll fill that, smooth it off, good to go. Right, it's all scuff sanded and cleaned with white lightning. Um, I used my new Azito detail sander. Um, if you didn't see in my previous video, that was 30 bucks. Came with 20 um, sanding pads from Bunnings, so that was a bargain. It does spill a little bit. It's it's not great at catching, but you know it's better than a kick up the ass, and it's better than my last one. Um, I'm going to go inside now to do an unboxing because I've just had delivery from Caprioli. Not Caprioli, Capriol. Why can't I get that name right? Anyway, I'll do an unboxing there whilst this is drying. It probably take a bit. Bit of a while because it's a bit damp, so uh, better get into my shopping. Okay, so as we're doing, as we're painting this top, everything's going to be a little bit different on this one. So at the moment, it's got an uneven finish. Or what I mean by that is different surfaces. So I've got some raw wood here. I've got some um, filler over here. More sort of raw wood here. So what I want to do first of all is make sure that this is consistent. So I want to give myself a good base to start painting on. So I'm going to prime it. I'm using Purico base and blocker, the gray one. I don't want to put any white anywhere. I don't want to make work harder for myself. So I'm going for the gray one. Still don't know what color I'm painting the piece. I know it's going to be a dark color. Um, but if I, if I put a white primer on this, I'll just be creating even more work for myself. So I may, where's my water? Now I will probably, I'll see how this goes on. It's quite thick. So I'll probably um, spritz it as I go because it's a top. I want to keep it as smooth as possible. And I may even give it a smooth sand afterwards. We'll just see how we go. Um, and I'm using my sleek 38 mil. Okay, let's have a look. So it's quite thick. I've not used the gray one before. Yeah, that is thick. So I am gonna just spritz. Just be mindful, it's okay to spritz because it's water, water base, but just be mindful that it can, it's what you're doing then is, is really dilute, diluting its, um, its properties, so. Given though that I'm not putting this on for the tanning blocker, I'm just putting it on so that I can get a consistent base. I'm okay with that. It's more important to me for this, for it to be smooth and not have the brush strokes. So this is why I'm doing this. When you're working with a thick paint, it's hard to do that. It's hard to get rid of 
uh, brush strokes. And this just also gives you a little bit more work time. So what I'll do is two coats of this, and then we'll see, I'll probably give it a light sand, but I'll come back and I'll show you doing that. Right, so it's got one coat on now, and that's just drying, but I just want to show you, hopefully you can see how it, how it takes the paint differently on the raw wood here. It's um, soaked in already to the to the raw, and it gives a different finish. So, see, this is still damp here. It's dry here. So, the aim of this is to get this consistent. So, I'll be filling that up so it's not going to keep soaking in, and then we'll have a consistent base. And it's starting to rain, which is awesome because I can see it all spitting on this. Great, awesome. Right, so that's two coats of the primer on now, and I'm just waiting for it to dry, and then I'll give it a sand. I just wanted to, s hopefully you can see the difference now. Now that it's all taken it the same, so we've um, basically primed that raw piece of um, wood that was there, so that now when we paint over it, everything is going to take it the same way. This isn't going to suddenly take the paint in a different way and give us a rough texture. It's all going to be the same, so we've got this nice consistent finish. Still haven't decided on the colour yet. Decision made, go bold or go home, I say. I'm going with Vintage Bird Winter Green. Look at it. Look at it. I love it. I haven't actually done a piece of furniture in this before. I, I only had a little 100 mil pot, so I had to mix it to give me enough to do some bedsides. But it's, I, I tried it as soon as I had it. I just tried it on a little test piece so I could see it on its own, and it was sensational. I love that word, sensational. So I'm, I'm going for it. I've actually, this is a one litre um, pot. I've got another one of these as well because I loved it so much. So I'll start doing the body. And then once this is dry, it's actually coming up quite smooth already, but I'm going to give it a little scuff, sand, a little smooth sand. Um, let's get stuck in. Right. Let's look at this beautiful girl color. I love greens. I love them, um, it's my happy place. Dead set, my happy place. Have I stirred that enough, do you think? Let me do that again, just in case. It's been sat for a while, waiting for the perfect piece. Although I think any piece is perfect for this colour, really. Right, so I have to decant it, which really you should do on any project, but you know, I don't. There we are. Oh, I'm so excited. And I'm going to be using my sleek 38 mil. Let's have a look at her. Oh, man alive. Look at it. Oh. Oh, man. That's. Oh, I don't even know if you can see it. Right, this is going to be two, maybe three coats, probably three. And in the final coat, because this 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 is a mineral paint, an all-in-one, so it's got a built-in top coat sealer, but it's a matte finish. Um, and as you know, I prefer a um, a satin finish. So for the last coat, I'll just add in a bit of I'll, I'll just do a mixture of top coat and paint. So I get that satin finish. Oh man, this is stunning. Yesterday I had a new favorite color. Today I've got another new favorite color. I'm so fickle, but that's okay. Right, I'll get on with this. Right, this is almost dry now, and honestly, because I've used that mister and thinned it out, it is as smooth as a baby's bum already. I don't need to sand it. So I'm just going to leave it a little while longer to so it dries properly. I've put one coat on um, everywhere else. I just want to make sure this is fully dry before I start hitting it with the paint. But I'm really stoked with that, how smooth that's come out. Really good. 
Right, let's get some paint on this. Like I said, that's nice and smooth, so I'm not gonna sand it. I may sand it after doing one of these coats, I'm not sure. So, I've got my paint, I've got my mister, and I'm just gonna keep this damp. I know lots of people say don't do this with mineral paint, but I have never had a drama. And I wanna keep this, you're better to do thin coats, a few thin coats than one thick one. So it's probably going to take me um, three coats, maybe four on top of this grey because I'm um, spritzing it. But I would definitely rather that and you're going to get a better result. That's just my opinion anyway. It's really hard. Oh, it's not really hard, but you know, it's really important, I think, to get a really nice smooth finish on the top when it's painted. Bailey says, thank you, Bailey. Appreciate it. Oh man, she's molting good. Who needs that? So like I've said, the spritzing just gives you a little bit more work time as well. So in this instance, it's, it's doing two things. It's thinning out the paint and it's giving you um, more work time. So I'm just gonna get on with this. I'll come back when this one is dry and I've probably got the second coat on the rest of the body and then I'll do the next coat on this. So I'll just take you through that process. Right, I just did another coat and I forgot to record it, sorry. You can still see these patches where those areas um, were sanded a little bit. So the, um, the blocker didn't do everything I was hoping it would do. It did give me an even colour to paint over, but it still has left me with these issues. This will resolve though um, as the paint gets darker throughout. So I'm going to go in with another, co another coat now. It's still really smooth. I know you can see brush strokes because of the light colour underneath, but it feels really smooth. So, let's go again. So like I said, the secret is just thin coats. Oh, geez, I forget that this car is ongoing. I keep, I keep pumping it as if it's a normal um, sprayer. So up until now, I've not really been too concerned about uh, my brush strokes and the, and the direction because I just needed to get the paint on. But now as I'm getting closer to the final coat, I'm just gonna be a bit more deliberate. We're keeping them straight. I prefer not to have these stop and starts over here, to be honest, but um, we'll work on that on the final coat and get rid of that. I'll probably do one more coat after this and then I'll do the coat with the top coat in just because I want to make sure that we get this consistent colour here. Such a beautiful colour. Let's see if this sells. You know where it'll end up if it doesn't. It's not really any biggie. I've had lots of interest in that Chester Draws the Hampton Olive one. It's not sold yet, but um, I'm also not pushing it because, well, you know room in my house for that as well <laughs> but yeah there's been lots of interest so I don't doubt for a second and that'll be gone right I'm gonna carry on doing the rest of this and then um, I'll probably bring you back when I'm doing the top coat right so it's dried on the drawers now so this is two coats two good coats it's self leveled really well which I'm really happy with it's it dries a lot darker than the um, original color that you see in the in the pot but I'm not sad about that because it's a more sellable color I think this is this dark more of a forest green I would say so now I'm going to go in it's, it's got this matte finish like I said it, it, it is it is it does have a built-in top coat and sealer um but I prefer the satin finish so I've got I don't know about 30 mil in there now I'm just going to pour in some of the Carps and Millie satin top coat. I'll pour in a fair bit because I want this to be mostly top coat. So this is probably um, 
let's say 30 70 so 30 paint 70 top coat and the reason I'm doing this rather than going straight on with the paint uh, with the top coat is because it's a dark color and if you put top coat straight over a, um, a dark color you can get streaking so this will reduce it because now it's just like it's just like paint see might put some more in actually so yeah now we're at about 30 70 but you know I just do it by eye I don't people keep asking me about the ratio I just make it up as I go along so uh, and you should do the same just think Jamie Oliver in paint just check it all in give it a good mix and go for it see the difference in the color that was too much on there see how it dries dries a much darker much deeper color I only had that much on my paint then because I'd use the brush to stir it with. Again, lazy. She just got a stirrer and I wouldn't have the paint brush, the paint all the way up the brush. But yeah, so that now I'll get no streaking and I'll have a lovely satin finish. And the bonus of adding, adding it into the top coat, into the final coat as well with the colour is that you know sometimes you miss little areas so it just picks up on those areas too so it just rather than just putting a top coat on it's giving you uh, a little bit more coverage too so I'll get on with and do the rest of this unit so I've finished the body that's got the paint on now with the top coat as well um, but now I'm back to the top so this is still going to be just neat paint no top coat mixed in yet because i don't have full coverage i don't have a consistent full coverage yet so i'm going back in with my mister and the paint so and i just wanted to show you hopefully you'll be able to see it but when you're doing this you'll see some little water bubbles sort of appear just brush them out i hope they appear now But yeah, you just see little sort of white bubbles and you think, oh my God, I've gone too much, I've done too much. Just carry on and brush it out. They'll go. I'm automatically brushing them out now as I see them, but yeah, it's going to be impossible for me to show you. But when you see little spots appear, don't panic. It's normal. Just work them out. Just means there's a bit too much water on there, but that's all good. So I'm going to carry on doing the top of this. I'm hoping I can get full coverage this time and then I'll give it a little sand and then we'll go in with the final coat. Time to get the top coat on this. I'm not going to sand it. It doesn't need it. It's seriously as smooth as a baby's bum. That paint self levels really well and when you add the, um, the mister, it's just a winner. It's it's so good. So let's get on there with the top coat mix now. So my aim is to try and go as far as possible in one go. Let's see, this is a long piece to do this with. But I'm just gonna get it nice and damp. Keep it all damp. It's going to be my plan. It's probably scares some people. Yes, it's mineral paint. Yes, I'm smissed in. No, I will die from it. It's just water and paint. Oh, and a bit of top coat. Right. And always keep your mixer in. Keep mixing because the paint will, will float to the bottom. Ha! <gasps> did I just say float to the bottom? I'm pretty sure I did. It. so I want to do full length okay and you can see there's heaps of water on this but I'm just going to keep working it don't stress about it the water will start soaking in but I want it like this so that I've got these long straight 
movements. No stop and start brush strokes. And like I was saying, there's little water spots appearing. Just keep working them. It's all good. And it's not like I need to stress too much about the um, top coat being watered down because the paint has also got a built-in top coat. You know, this is just extra that I'm doing here. This is just extra protection. And I'm rocking back and forth, if you can't see. I'm just, ow, and I just stood on a nail. Just cutting those bloody nails earlier. Screws, horrible things. Oh, I need to take my tooth out. Smack me in the tooth. No one says you've got to wear a mouth guard when you're cutting nails, those screws. I just stood there for a while staring, thinking, geez, did I just take my tooth out? So you see how easy it's going on, guys? We're not gonna, it's not gonna be brush strokes. It's nice and damp. If you see little water spots, just carry on working until they're gone. It's all good. It's just water, just spots. And because we've done this now, because we've watered it down, we've got this extra, extra work time. If you didn't, you wouldn't be able to do this. Mineral paint dries, it doesn't reactivate with water. So this is just giving us more work time. Now I'm just gonna tidy up all around the edges. And then we are done. This has been a big job, you know, for me. Well, actually, let me see what the time is. Someone was asking me to put a clock on my um, jobs today. I don't know how to do that. Started at 10 o'clock and it's now, from, it's 10 to four. And in between that, I've been doing my other job, but you know, that's how long it's taken from start to finish with the little gaps in between. See, and I'm still able to tidy up around here because it's still damp. That's it. Next time you're gonna see this girl, she'll be ready to stage. She will be staged. There she is, or is this one a he? I'm not sure. All ready for her photos. There's a few touch-up areas I need to do. See, I've noticed these as I've um, put the doors on. That's not where it's scratched. That's just where I've missed it when they were on the table and I had them lay down. Um, but yeah, she's a big one. I'm going to put another co a top coat on as well, another which you've already watched me do. I'm just going to do that just for extra durability. But this is it. It's a beautiful colour. But I'm tired. And these girls are so clingy today. It's windy. Harper, you're not liking this wind, are you? She's just, she's literally on my screwdriver as I was doing stuff today. She wouldn't leave my side. She's terrified of wind. Anyway, please like and subscribe, guys. I've got a headache coming. This one's a big one. It was a big one today. And I didn't start till late. I started at about 10 o'clock. So, um, yeah, but she came out beautifully, didn't she? Will I sell it? That's the question. Who knows? No one ever knows. I don't know. Oh, sleep time.